in this section uh, we will discuss what is the requirement of uh, more than one label uh, in the mpls vpn right so we will discuss uh, what is the uh, label stack and what is the requirement what is the aim behind using uh, multiple labels in into the mpls vpn so let's see a quick example here uh, on this uh, if you are able to see on the screen so uh, we have the ce1 and the ce2 so at ce1 we have one uh, prefix 3.3.3 .3. so we want this prefix uh, to advertise to ce2 so what are the different steps that uh, are going to take place so first of all let's consider that uh, between pe1 and uh, ce1 we are using uh, pgp okay so let's consider that uh, we are using pgp here between pe1 and ce1 so ce1 is going to advertise this particular uh, prefix to pe1 right so as we discussed in our previous lecture regarding the rd value and the route targets so the vpn v4 uh, uh, route will be created right so what is the uh, what is the value of that vpn v4 route that is so what is going to happen is we have the rd value the rd value or the route target export value that is 100 colon 100 that will be appended with the prefix right 3.3.3 slash 32 right and what else uh what will be the next stop sorry so the next stop value let me type it again so the vpn v4 prefix will be uh, generated by pgp that will be the rd value 100 colon 100 and the prefix uh, value right that is 3.3.3 slash 32 so this vpn v4 uh, route will be generated and what will be the next hope uh, for this particular uh, prefix that will be the loopback ip of pe1 which is 1.1.1 right and the next thing that will be there it will be the rd or the route target value right the route target value is 100 colon 100 so this particular update the pe1 because we are using the ibgp neighborship between pe1 and pe2 so pe1 is going to send this update to pe2 right and let's assume that uh, between pe2 and uh, ce2 also we are using bgp so now at pe2 if you can see here we are uh, using the import value 100 colon 100 right into vrf customer a here also we are using uh, vrf customer a and into the customer a vrf at pe1 the export value is 100 colon 100 so as we uh, already discussed uh, regarding this in our previous lecture so pe2 is going to install this particular uh, prefix 3.3.3.3 into vrf customer a and now pe2 is going to advertise this particular subnet to ca2 who is the uh, bgp neighbor of pe2 so now finally uh, we will receive this particular subnet 3.3.3 .3 at ca2 right slash 32 now now if ce2 wants to communicate with this particular prefix 3.3.3.3 .3 .3 what is going to happen is also what we have uh, considered is that into the mpls uh, backbone we are running ospf and uh, we uh, for the demonstration purpose uh, we will not go into all the details what are the labels that will be generated by uh, r2 r3 and all so we are considering that uh, between PE1 and PE2, the neighborship, the IPGP neighborship is using these loopbacks IPs 1.1.1, which is the loopback IP of PE1. And at PE2, we are using the loopback IP 2.2.2.2. Okay. And uh, the uh, because 1.1.1 uh, uh, is the connected subnet of PE1, so PE1 is going to generate the implicit null label, right? 
so it is going to generate the implicit null label for 1.1.1 right and it will send this information to r9 so r9 into its lfib uh, we are considering that it generated label number 909 for 1.1.1 and it will send this particular label information to pe2 stating that if it means that uh, r9 is expecting label number 909 from pe2 if pe2 wants to communicate or wants to reach 1.1.1 right Okay, so now let's discuss about the traffic. So when CE2 wants to communicate with 3.3.3, what is going to happen is that PE2 is going to receive the packet at this interface, right? Which is into which is into VRF customer A, right? So now PE2 is going to check its VRF table, VRF is customer A. And now finally it is going to find out that yes, I received 3.3.3, .3 right? From my IBGP neighbor, which is PE1. That is why you can see the next stop is 1.1.1, right? So now PE2, because we are using the MPLS VPN into the uh, VRF table, we are not having this next hope. So PE2 is not going to find out this next hope in 1.1.1 because 1.1.1 is a part of the global routing table, right? And we are running the OSPF here, right? Uh, if we receive any traffic on the uh, VRF enable interface, only the uh, VRF table is going to be checked. But now because we are running the uh, MPLS VPN, so when PA2 doesn't find the next hop into the VRF table, it knows where to look for it. So it is going to check the uh, global routing table. And now it is going to find out what is my next hop, right? And because the uh, now PA2 needs to sense this, this traffic over the MPLS, right? MPLS enabled interface. So it is going to put the label value for this particular next hop, right? Which is 1.1.1. So what is the label value for 1.1 that it receives from r9 it is label number 909 right so pe2 will send the partic this particular information to uh, r9 so it is going to send the prefix right what is the destination? It's 3.3.3 .3 slash 32. Next stop. What is the next stop? It's 1.1. And what is the label value? Uh, the label value is 909, which it receives from R9. So when R9 receives this information, R9 is going to check its LFib, right? Because R9 receives a uh, one information on a MPLS enabled interface with a label, right? So it is going to find out what is my remote label for this particular label that I received. So when R9 is going to check into its alpha, it is going to find out that against this label 909, I have implicit null label into my alpha, right? That I received from PE1. And what is the behavior for the implicit null label, right? That we already discussed in our previous lectures. So R9 is going to remove this label and it will send the rest of the information. So now PE1 will receive the information on a MPLS enabled interface without a label, right? And this is the uh, normal behavior on a MPLS enabled interface that if a router receives a packet without any label, it is going to check the global routing table, right? So now because R9 sends the packet without any label, so P1 is going to check the global routing table and there is no route as 3.3.3 .3 into the global routing table of PE1 because this particular route 3.3 .3, it is into the VRF table of CE1, right? So that is why in this case, our traffic is going to be black hole at PE1, right? Because into the global routing table of PE1, we don't have anything like this, right? 
so that is why we need more than one level into the MPLS VPN and how does it works let's find out now let's find out what happens uh, exactly into the MPLS VPN so here we were having the our prefix 3.3.3 slash 32 so when uh, p even receives uh, this particular subnet so the vpn v4 route is going to be generated 3.3.3 slash 32 and the rd value is going to be appended 100 colon 100 right like this what will be the next hope next hope will be 1.1.1 the rd value or the export route target export value will be 100 colon 100 and the mpbgp is going to generate one vpn label also okay so let's consider that uh, pe1 generated one vpn label one uh, double zero one okay so now because we are having the ibgp between pe1 and pe2 so PE1 is going to send this particular information to PE2, okay? So PE2 receives this information. And now, because we are having the PGP between PE2 and CE2, now finally CE2 is going to receive this information here, 3.3.3 slash 32. Now let's see what happened uh, in this case now. So CE2 wants to communicate with this particular uh, prefix that it received 3.3.3.3 now pe2 as our previous case it receives this particular information here on the vrf enable interface and what vrf we are using we are using vrf customer a so now it is going to find out that yes uh, i have learned about 3.3.3 prefix why am I IBGP neighbor, OSP E 1.1. And what is the next hope for that? The next hope is 1.1.1. And because we are running MPLS VPN, this 1.1.1, he needs to look into the global routing table. And because now the traffic needs to send to the MPLS enabled interface, it is going to put the uh, IGP label, okay? So the label uh, that it received for the next hope from R9, right? So what information uh, PE2 is going to send to R9 is, it will send the prefix, uh, the prefix that it wants to communicate with, right? 3.3 slash 32. The next hope value will be 1.1.1, right? And the IGP label, the label for the next hope, what is that? It's 909, let me type it here, the IGP, IGP label, IGP label is 909, and also it is going to put the VPN label that it received from the IBGP neighbor, that is 1001, right? So this is the information that R9 received. Now, R9 is going to inspect or going to check the top label. R9 uh, is not going to do anything with the VPN label. It just, uh, it will check the IGP label or the top label, which is 909. And what is the job of R9? The job of R9 is to swap this particular label with the label that it is uh, having uh, into its LFIB, right? And what is the label information for 909 into its LFIB that is for the 1.1.1 that is implicit null. So now R9 is going to remove this IGP label and it will send the rest of this information to uh, PE1. So now PE1 will get this particular subnet or pre prefix, sorry. Next hope is 1.1 who is uh, PE1 and now PE1 will receive this information with the VPN label. And as we discussed, because now PE1 received the packet or information on a MPLS enabled interface with a label. So now this time it is going to check the uh, VRF table. Even if uh, PE1 checks 
its alphabet it is going to find out that it this is the vpn label and uh, it generated this vpn label for this pre, uh, particular prefix which it received on this particular interface so it needs to send this send the traffic to ce1 so now this time this is the benefit or this is why we use the uh, more than one label into mpls vpn because if you don't use it our traffic is going to be dropped right and the same way the communication is going to happen from uh, into the reverse direction from ce1 to ce2 so this was all about uh, the label stack into mpls so in our next section uh, we will uh, discuss about the control plane and uh, the forwarding plane about the mpls vpn so this was it uh, if you like my videos uh, i would request to like and uh, subscribe my channel and you can sh uh, share these videos to whoever it, uh, just want to learn about mpls so thanks for watching Yes, see you in next section.